Hi there and welcome to Craft Jitsu's Kumahimo video. Now I'm going to show you how to make the disc that the Kumahimo braid is made on. And you need a piece of cardboard, something like that from a washing powder box would be great. And here I'm drawing around a dish to give a circle of about, I don't know, maybe five inches. Now we need a small circle in the centre, so I'm using this weight, just making sure it's in the middle. I don't think you need to be too accurate with the making of this, but we might as well try. So draw around and make the circle in the centre. Now I've added this dot in the centre of the smaller circle to help with the positioning of the ruler. Again, it doesn't have to be super accurate. So we need a little line at the top and the bottom at 12 and 6 o'clock. And then at 9 and 3 o'clock. Now draw a line halfway between the lines that you've drawn already. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but reasonably accurate. Now by eye, draw two more lines between each of these little sections. Sorry you can't see the first one, but you'll get the idea in the second one. There's one and two. And now we start cutting it out. Now make a hole in the centre so that you can get the scissors through. cut out the central circle. Now snip approximately a centimetre into each of these little lines that you've made. And now you're ready to start making your braid. Now for this example I've used four one metre lengths of two colours, so that's eight lengths in total. And this is what happens when you pull the wrong end of a skein of stranded cotton. So you should now have four pink and four purple lengths. Now fold the lengths in half, putting the ends together. And at the other end you've got this loop. Now just tie a knot as close to the end as you can.
and then I give each strand a little tweak just to make sure that the knot's nice and tight. Now put the knot through the hole in the centre and we want two strands of pink next to each other. Then a gap and then two strands of purple. And carry on arranging them like this all the way around. Now if you're going to make a longer piece than this, I would highly recommend putting them onto these bobbins. I think any longer than this and they're really going to start to tangle and it's a real pain trying to, every time you want to move a thread it tangles up with the previous ones. So they'll dangle down like this, but I'm not going to use them for now. Now this little arrow is invaluable when you're learning because it often gets to a point where you can't remember quite which way you're supposed to turn it. So now we know. Now if you imagine the threads are in fours opposite each other, so these two and these two. And then you take the top left thread and put it down to the bottom left. And then you take the bottom right thread and put it up to the top right. And that's your stitch done. Now we turn the whole thing to the left and start again. So top left to bottom left, bottom right to top right and turn. Top left to bottom left, bottom right to top right and turn. Now a handy tip if you want to stop is to stop halfway through the stitch so you've got one thread up there and three at the bottom and you can see the progress so far. It's only small but it's a great thing to do while you're watching the television. And after about half an hour we've got this piece here. So when we want to finish you just unpop all the threads To finish it off we want to tie a knot in the other end. Try and tie it as close to the work you've done but without covering up too much of it. And again give each thread a little tweak just to make sure it's good and tight. Now if we give both ends a little pull, it stretches quite nicely so you look like you've done more than you thought. Now you can just trim off the ends and cut the loop. I've seen people make pretty jewellery with these and also they make great handles for bags and ways to hang pieces of embroidery. And if you've enjoyed this video please feel free to share it or subscribe to our channel.